Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining me again. It's pouring rain outside, so we are going to spend most, though not all, of our time indoors today. I need to polish the silver coffee and tea service. I want to iron some dinner napkins, and I need to put something together for tonight's dinner. Since winter squash is in season, I'm going to fill some acorn squash with a savory filling that I think you will really enjoy. And the first thing we need to do is go buy that squash at the local farm store. So please take a drive with me. Farm is a year-round farmer's market located in Chatham, New York. It is my favorite source for locally grown, in-season produce. Just look at this winter squash. For our stuffed squash recipe, I am selecting a riotously colored acorn squash. The variety is aptly named Carnival. We also need some fresh sage for our recipe. This sage was grown right here at the berry farm. Let's head home. We are home again, and I am so glad that the farm store had this carnival squash. This is simply acorn squash, but with this gorgeous coloring. You could use regular green acorn squash here. Now, see how the squash kind of rocks around on the cutting board? I want it to be able to stand upright, so I'm going to cut off this little point. This is the blossom end of the squash. Voila, we are standing upright. Then I need to cut off a lid. Since it's only Lizette and me for dinner tonight, I'm going to do two of these squash, and then when Mr. Fox returns this weekend, I will make the same dish for him. If you are new, Mr. Fox is my spouse. He works in New York City during the week. Now save the lids. And then I'm going to scoop out the seeds. I'm going to use a cookie scoop or an ice cream scoop. I'm going to save some of these seeds because I might like to plant carnival squash next summer. Now my oven is preheating to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius. Then I'm going to brush the squash with some melted butter. I'm putting the squash on a baking sheet along with the lids and then I will bake the squash until the flesh is perfectly tender. That's going to take 45 minutes to one hour. Before we make the filling, I need to do a little grocery shopping in my kitchen garden. It's very muddy out there, so I'm going to put on my boots and then we can head outside. 
These are the leeks that you and I planted together back in May. To plant the leeks, we first used a rake handle to make little holes in the soil. Then we inserted the tiny leek seedlings into the holes and watered them in. Overhead watering from spring rains gradually filled in the holes. Planting this old-fashioned way forces the leeks to develop their blanched or white section. And my, how these leeks have grown. So I rinsed my leeks off outside, but I have to clean them up some more. Off with a fright wig of roots. And then I need the white and some of the tender green. And then I will wash the tough green and save it for stock. Look at how long this green part is. To clean the leeks, I cut an X shape down the stalk. This relaxes the layers of a leak so it can be rinsed of debris under running water. Cut the leaks into a fine dice. I'm going to make the filling on the stove top. And what I've got here is one and a half pounds of ground turkey. You could use ground chicken or even ground beef. In a large skillet, cook the ground turkey over medium heat, breaking it up as it cooks. I can link the meat chopping tool I am using here in the description below if you are interested. Transfer the finished turkey to a plate and set it aside. Then add some oil and the dice leeks to the skillet. Lower the heat, cover the skillet, and cook just until the leeks soften but do not color at all, about five minutes. Return the turkey to the skillet. Then stir in a half cup of good red wine, one and a half teaspoons of Worcester sauce, six ounces of plain tomato paste, a generous pinch of both salt and pepper, a teaspoon of dried thyme, and four or five chopped sage leaves. The squash is done when it can be easily pierced with a fork. My squash is done, my filling is done, but I'm not ready to serve dinner yet. I need to polish some silver and iron those napkins that I mentioned earlier, and that's fine. I can fill the squash and finish baking it right before dinner time. We host lots of cocktail parties, afternoon teas, and dinner parties. So of course, I have napkins of various sizes for all of these events. And I have a zen-like attitude about ironing the napkins. 
I can feel the wrinkles in my mind dissipate as I patiently press out the rumples in the claws. There is nothing worse than being all prepared to host a dinner party only to realize that you need to iron your dinner napkins. So I like to have these done well ahead of time. I never use paper napkins because I find them to be wasteful. So all of my napkins are cloth, including my cocktail napkins. These are my tea napkins. They are trimmed with lace. I bought them on Amazon, and if they still sell them, I can link them in the description below if you are interested. On to the silver tea service. Cleaning silver, just like ironing cloth napkins, is rather meditational for me. I honestly do not mind the job at all. In the comments, let me know if you share a similar attitude about cleaning the decorative fixtures in your own home. I can link the silver polish that I am using here in the description below. Clean gloves. I'm using a soft, dry microfiber cloth to buff the silver to a brilliant sheen. Many people have asked what I do for the inside of these kettles and whatnots. I use hot water and dishwashing soap to clean the insides. And this is shining up beautifully. All of that tarnish is gone. It feels great to have all of this silver polished. I try to do this at least twice a year. And at last, it's dinner time. I'm going to fill the squash cavities with this wonderful, whiny turkey mixture. I am topping the filling with shredded Asiago cheese. You might like to use Parmesan cheese here. I'm going to return this to the oven just until the cheese melts. That's going to take about five minutes. I will use the remaining filling for the remaining squash that it will serve to Mr. Fox when he returns from the city this weekend.
have a recipe for this stuffed squash over on my website, so I will link that in the description below. I cannot wait to taste this. This tastes like sunshine on a rainy day. And yes, it is still pouring rain outside. Of course, you want to scrape the walls of the squash in order to add some squash to your fork. This is yummy. This is heavenly. I hope you will give this a try someday. Again, I will post the recipe for this stuffed squash in the description below. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today, and we cannot wait to see you in the next episode. Chin chin. Thank you.